Hello, dark reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie, and with me is my creepy co-host, Carrie. Hello. Finally. And we are doing our favorite thing today, which is new spooky kids reads that are coming out in July of 2023. I am pumped because we're seeing a lot of cool Halloween-ish ones now. So Carrie, why don't you kick us off today? My first book is The Afterlife of the Party by Darcy Marks. It comes out July 18. When an angel comes to his home to deliver a message, Malachi immediately knows what's going on. The seraph Cassandra, who helped his squad recapture Samuel Paris's wayward soul, has finally set a date for her interdimensional mixer. This sounds like a sequel. Mm. With fey angels and hell dwellers alike on the invite list to promises to be the event of a lifetime. And another character, oh, Mal, Malachi, can't wait to go to the hot new fashion salon in town and have Morgan, its fabulous fey owner, help him create the perfect look. But Mal's parents and even some of his squad mates are not as excited for the soiree. And when Mal overhears another fey talking to Morgan, he starts to wonder if there's something at play other than a simple party. But the mixer gives everyone the opportunity to get to know people from different dimensions and form new connections. What could possibly go wrong? This sounds like it could be set in the Charmed universe. <laughs> yes. It's meant for grade level 3 to 7 or reading age 8 to 12 years. It's The Afterlife of the Party by Darcy Marks. My first book of today is The Bellwoods Game. This comes out July 18th. It's by Celia Crampion, and it's illustrated by them as well. It's very cute. So there are some black and white illustrations kind of trickled throughout, but it's for reading ages 8 through 12, which is also very interesting. So mid-grade level. It is perfect for fans of small spaces and doll bones. It's spooky and very illustrated, and it follows a girl who hopes to fix her outcast status through a game in the haunted woods, only to discover that some <laughs> legends should not be played with. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows Fall Hollow is haunted. It has been ever since Abigail Snook went into the woods many years ago, never to be seen again. Since then, it's tradition for the sixth graders at Beckett Elementary to play the Bellwoods game on Halloween night. Three kids are chosen to go into the woods. Whoever rings the bell there wins the game and saves the town for another year. Ooh, brave. Yeah. But if Abigail's ghost captures the players first, the spirit is let loose to wreak havoc on Fall Hollow. Or that's just how the story goes. Now, now it is Bailey's year to play. She can finally find out what really happens. And legend has it, the game's winner gets a wish. Maybe, just maybe, if Bailey wins, she can go back to the way things used to be before her grandma got sick and everyone at school started hating her. Mm. No! But when the night begins, everything the kids thought they knew about the game and each other is challenged. One thing's for sure. Something sinister is at play, waiting for them all in the woods. This sounds good. I like it. It does. This is the Bellwoods game. It is by Celia Crampion. My first book today is a board book for babies. They recommend baby to five years, but there's no five-year-old that's going to play with a board book that's only eight pages. <laughs> the publisher is Mud Puppy. It's Boo Bark board book. <laughs> so it's a bunch of dogs wearing very sweet, not dark, trick-or-treat costumes. There's a pug in a pumpkin and some kind of little corgi in a ghost costume and they're exploring the woods and they're meeting a venus flytrap and they're in the ocean swimming with their costumes on and they're in the woods hooting with owls it's just a really cute more autumnal than halloween book it's boo bark by mud puppy and the artist is katherine selbert and it comes out july 11 my next book is boo who <laughs> And other wicked Halloween knock-knock jokes. This is a lift the flap joke book. It's by Katie Hall, Lisa Eisenberg, and our illustrator Steve Bjorkman. And it comes out July 18th. Knock knock. Who's there? Coffin. Coffin who? Oh, Coffin geez. from all the dust in here. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I should have had you reply. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Uh, enter if you dare, wander through the haunted house with trick-or-treaters and lift the flaps for spooky reveals and funny punchlines. These Halloween day-themed jokes promise fun for all ages, 
the flaps work beautifully with the jump scare nature of Halloween. Uh, so this is a very unique art style. It's very cute. Um, it actually kind of looks like books that I grew up with. It's got a lot of really fun, spooky illustrations. The kids have really adorable costumes, like from Zorro, a cowboy, a dinosaur, and a Viking. So this is called Boo Who. This is for reading ages four through eight by Katie Hall, Lisa Eisenberg, and Steve Bjorkman. My next book is called Brick, Dust, and Bones. It's book one in the Marius Gray series. It's by M.R. Fernet, or Fernet, grade levels four to six. A 12-year-old cemetery boy and monster hunter, along with his flesh-eating mermaid friend, has to race <laughs> against the clock to save the ghost of his dead mother in Brick, Dust, and Bones. It's a middle-grade debut by this author, M.R. Fernet. So Marius Gray hunts monsters. He's not supposed to, He's only 12, and his job as a cemetery boy is to look after the ghosts in his family's graveyard. He should be tending these ghosts and, of course, going to school to learn how to live between worlds without getting into trouble. But Marius has an expensive goal. He wants to bring his mother back from the dead, and that takes a lot of mystic coins, which means a lot of monster, monster hunting. And his mother's window to return is closing. If he wants her back, Marius is going to have to go after bigger and meaner monsters, decide if a certain flesh-eating mermaid is a friend or a foe, and avoid meddling demons and teachers along the way. Can he navigate New Orleans' gritty monster bounty hunting market, or will he have to say goodbye to his mother forever? This sounds pretty cool. It does. <laughs> it's Brick, Dust, and Bones, book one in a series, comes out July 11 by M.R. Furnit. You can totally tell Halloween is coming up. These books are <laughs> awesome. My next one is called Crimson Twill, Witch in the Country. This <laughs> comes out July 11, and it's by Callie George and Brigitta Sif is the illustrator. The illustrations over here look black and white, which I'm a little surprised about. I'm wondering if they're actually color in real life versus these samples on Amazon. So this is for reading ages 7 through 9. It is about... Crimson Twill's new friends from New Wart City, Maeve and Wesley, are coming for a visit. But as soon as they arrive at Crimson's house in Cackle County, things start to go wrong. At the rotten apple orchard, Crimson's ripening spell goes horribly awry. What will they do with all that rotten applesauce? Uh, then at the broom straw field, Wesley cuts too much straw and starts to float away. And when the friends try to collect frog's breath for their spells, it makes everything wonderfully green and warty. <laughs> Maeve... <laughs> Just what you wanted. Maeve gets a stinky face full of it. Uh, what on earth is going on? The whole countryside feels like something big is about to happen. And Crimson wonders if it has something to do with Granny Twill and that giant cauldron of stew she made. Can Crimson get to the bottom of this bad luck mystery? And most importantly, will her city friends ever want to visit her again? <laughs> that is an important question. So this is called Crimson Twill, Witch in the Country. This is by Callie George and Brigitta Sif. My next book is Eerie Tales from the School of Screams. It's by Graham Annable. Comes out July 18. School is tough. School is scary. School is eerie. Mm. No one knows this better than Davis and Emily and Carrie and Katie. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> but they're not scared of school because of tough tests or merciless vice principals. No, they're scared because their teacher wants her students to present the class with the spookiest, most chilling stories they can think of. So from the twisted mind of Graham Annable comes five horrifying stories that will scare your skeleton right out of your skin. Are you ready to stare down the face in the forest? Do you think you can handle the truth behind the village that vanished? Lock the doors, turn on all the lights, and arm yourself with candy. You'll need all the help you can get to face these nightmares. The grade level is 4 to 6, reading age 8 to 12 years-ish. And it's Eerie Tales from the School of Screams by Graham Annabel. That would be a great gift to give a kid long before Halloween. Oh, yeah. And then they're going to be that really cool story kid that has all the spooky, spooky <laughs> Halloween tales. Oh, yeah. 
My next book is a Goosebumps book. I had no idea R.L. Stein was still continuing on that Goosebumps legacy. This is Fright Night. This came out July 4th. This is Slappy's World. You only scream in it. Kelly Crosby is the new kid in school. So far, it's not going so well. He's already gotten lost, had trouble making friends, and annoyed the monster that lives in the school, or he is annoyed, the monster that lives in the school basement. That's right, this new school has a monster. Every year at a party called Fright Night, one unlucky kid is chosen to be the monster's special guest of honor. Guess whose luck is about to run out? I'm guessing it's Kelly. (laughs) So this is Fright Night. This is by R.L. Stein, And this is apparently is book 19 of 19 of Goosebumps' Slappy World. His oh, whole... I, I know. <laughs> so make sure to get all 19. You got to get them all. All the Goosebumps. It's like Pokemon cards. What's next for you, Carrie? My next book is Haru, Zombie Dog Hero by Ellen O. It came out July 11th. It's the story of a Korean boy, a Korean American boy and his dog Haru or Haru who becomes a zombie. Even though the world is changing and zombie attacks are on the rise, the bond between this boy and his dog remains strong. And when their town is threatened, Haru must rescue them all. So Luke is 11 years old. He and his dog Haru are the best of friends. They're totally inseparable. But when their nasty landlord falsely accuses Haru of biting her, Haru is kidnapped. And Luke and his friends go on a serious mission to find and bring Haru home again. But they discover mysterious experiments happening at the old laboratory at Painted Lake. (gasps) It's owned by an evil multi-billionaire named Mr. Thomas Sinclair. And Luke and his friends soon fear that Sinclair's scientists could be doing illegal testing that might endanger Haru and their whole town. Their world is changing fast and soon Painted Lake is plagued by zombie attacks. But the love between Luke and Haru endures, ultimately helping to, uh uh-oh, spoiler alert, save them all. Oh, no! (laughs) That's Haru Zombie Dog Hero by Ellen O, spelled O-H. My next book is, it looks really cute. It's called The Scot, or The Little Scottish Ghost. It's a picture book. This comes out July 18th. It's by Franz Haller, and Werner Maurer is the illustrator, reading ages four through eight. It's a not-so-scary ghost story about a little ghost who learns that she's better at making people laugh out loud than faint from fear. (laughs) And the ghost is, like, blue, very blue, with bright yellow hair. It's so cute. Little ghost is learning how to haunt, but nothing goes right. Her Her ball and chain run away with her. Her clanking armor falls on top of her. And instead of terrifying people, she just makes them laugh. You must go to the ghost of Whistlefield, says Father Ghost. If anyone can teach you to be scary, he can. So little ghost goes to Whistlefield. She sees the villagers shaking with fear as blood-curdling shrieks echo from the gloomy castle. But when little ghost arrives there, she does not find at all what she has expected. So this looks really cute. The pictures are really unique. I don't even, I can't even describe this. This is actually kind of vintage looking it om- it it's almost like if you drew claymation i i really can't you're going to have to look it up over on our youtube channel or on amazon when you get home it's really cool though this is the little scottish ghost this is by franz holler and werner maurer if i had died as a little girl i could have been a little scottish ghost too and i had <laughs> blonde hair i were you blue too <laughs> no not until i became a ghost that's Jeez. true <laughs> My next book is I Love My Magic, part of the I Love My Book series. It's by Kelly Lee Miller. Comes out July 18. The the author is the illustrator. It's a companion to I Love My Fangs and I Love My Fur. It's about a little witch who overuses her magic and she must discover whether she can get by without her wand. Willow loves her magic. It's her favorite part of being a witch. It's sparkly, it's fun, and it's very useful. Maybe even too useful? When her wand is taken away after one too many shortcuts, how will Willow be able to get through the day? Can a witch be a witch without magic? 
This is intended for grade level preschool to age three, or to, excuse me, to third grade, or reading age four to eight years. It looks adorable, kind of cartoony. It's I Love My Magic by Kelly Lee Miller. My next book is an awesome table book or even if you have if you are a teacher and you're trying to inspire the kiddos to get into like mythology and stuff this one's great to just have lying around to inspire it's the magnificent book of monsters this comes out july 18th and it's by deanna ferguson and gonzalo kenny as the illustrator beautiful illustrations so we talk about all of these monsters from all cultures from across the world. So it's what the publisher says is learn why seeing the Morrigan means certain death. How ah. do you dis how do you defeat an a disembodied flying head? And which Greek ancient Greek monster can you turn to stone with a single glance? They talk about here. Let me show you guys the actual monsters here. We have like the Bunyip is in here the manticore the rock the sphinx so it really does cover many many cultures i can't pronounce a lot of the celtic ones i apologize i just don't want to butcher it and i will and i have many times uh the minotaur fenrir lots of cool stuff in this it's like i said stunning wonderful illustrations with I think almost every single monster and it has like little bullet points that explain where the monster comes from and what kind of myths they're in. It's very cool. So this is The Magnificent Book of Monsters by Deanna Ferguson and Gonzalo Kenny. My next book is a middle grade graphic novel about a monster girl who sneaks out of her foster home into a human town in search of her forever family. Aww. It's called Misfit Mansion by Kay DeVault, who is the author and illustrator, comes out July 25. So despite her monstrous appearance, Iris has never felt like she belongs in a mansion filled with Kelpies and Gorgons and unicorns. She longs to find a family, but unfortunately she and her housemates are trapped in a foster home for horrors, run by former paranormal investigator Mr. Halloway. Hmm. So when a human boy named Matthias breaks the house's ceiling spell, Iris and her companions are set free upon the town of Dead End Springs. But what Iris doesn't know is that Matthias is also a paranormal hunter, the kind who seeks to capture and destroy the horrors. She doesn't know that there's also other dangers ahead. As she searches for a home, she makes human friends, explores a brand new world, and stumbles upon a dark secret that Halloway has kept locked in the basement of the house. Will this long slumbering mystery destroy the family Iris so desperately seeks? The publisher is Athenium Books for Young Readers, grade level three to six or reading age eight years and up. It's a graphic novel called Misfit Mansion by Kay DeVault. My next book is a board book for babies. It is called Peekaboo Pumpkin from the Peekaboo series. This is their Halloween titled one, so you get to travel through halloween in this little book for babies baby to two so it says like peekaboo mousies peekaboo bat you can do peekaboo cat and they have all kinds of little poles there that are interactive and it's just really adorable the illustrations um and i like that things can be pushed pulled it's not just a board book essentially like it's interactive so this and it will be great to read to kids during Halloween this year for sure. I'm glad this is coming out earlier because some pl some people publish way too close to Halloween and it's like I want it for Halloween. Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> so this is Peekaboo Pumpkin. This is by Camilla Reed and In I Angela P. Arenas. <clears throat> sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said that wrong. I apologize. <laughs> My next book is The Skull, a Tyrolean Folktale by John Clausen, the author and illustrator. Comes out July 11. It's a thrilling retelling of a traditional Tyrolean folktale in a big abandoned house, which I love to read books about. On a barren hill lives a skull. A brave girl named Otella has escaped from terrible danger and run away. And when she finds herself lost in the dark forest, the lonely house beckons. 
Her host, the skull, is afraid of something too, something that comes every night. Can brave Otilla save them both? The skull is empowering, mysterious, and foreboding. The publisher is Candlewick, grade level 1 to 4, or reading age 6 to 9 years. The Skull, a Tyrolean Folktale, is by John Clausen with a K. Ooh. This next book I, I'm very excited about. It's The Very Unfortunate Wish of Melanie Yoshimura, and it comes out July 18th. It's a Coraline-esque retelling of a Japanese folktale that is called The Melon Princess and the Amenjaku. So one girl must save herself and her loved ones from a deceitful demon she befriends. How fun! So Melanie's parents have always been overprotective. They say it's because a demonic spirit called the Amenjaku once preyed upon kids back in Japan. But Melanie suspects it's just a cautionary tale to keep her in line. So on her 12th birthday... Melanie takes a chance and wishes for the freedom and adventure her parents seem determined to keep from her. As if conjured by her wish, the Amanjaku appears. At first, Melanie is wary. If this creature is real, are the stories about its, destru its destructive ways also real? In no time, however, the Amanjaku woos Melanie with with its ability to shapeshift, grant wishes, and understand her desire for independence. But what Melanie doesn't realize is that the Amanjaku's friendship has sinister consequences, and she quickly finds every aspect of her life controlled by the demon's trickery, including herself. Melanie is determined to set things right, but will she be able to before the Amanjaku turns her life, her family, and her community upside down? This cover is stunning. I love it. This is for reading ages 8 through 12, and it's 272 pages. It's a pretty big book. This is The Very Unfortunate Wish of Melanie Yoshimura by Waka T. Brown. My next book is called Wolf Boy is Scared. It's a hardcover picture book by Andy Harkness. It came out July 11. Wolf Boy shows readers it's okay to be a little bit scared in a hilarious story. The only way for Wolf Boy to get home before Moonset is by sneaking through the Grumble Monster's lair. Ooh. This is no problem for Wolf Boy, who's super brave and totally not afraid of anything, but the rabbit should walk ahead of him. Wolf Boy needs to, um, Watch their backs, after all. Wait, are those monster claws? Are those monster eyes? Maybe Wolf Boy is scared. It has bold art and a high-energy text perfect for reading out loud, and it, Wolf Boy is scared shows how being afraid is totally normal. Reading age three to six years, grade level one to two, the publisher is the very esteemed Bloomsbury Children's Books. Wolf Boy is Scared is by Andy Harkness. My next book is You're My Little Baby Boo board book. It comes out July 18th. It's very sweet. They have a whole bunch of You're My Little Blank. So You're My Little Pumpkin Pie. You're My Little Aww. Cutie Pie. You're My Little Bookworm. So they're, this one's their Halloween, strictly Halloween version of all their cute little baby boo things. So it says it's the sweetest treat to share with the little ones in your life. This addition to the beloved You're My Little series features beautiful nighttime illustrations of iconic Halloween characters like ghosts, pumpkins, and candy corn. Children will love the interactive features alongside the story about a parent's love for a child. It's a very cute board book for baby uh, through two years old. I'm checking out the illustrations. Now. Oh, these are really cute. So it says, like, you're my little baby boo. You never need to fear whatever fright comes in the night. It's just really cute. The illustrations are very vibrant as well and interactive. This is You're My Little Baby Boo board book by Nicola Edwards and Natalie Marshall. My final book today is Why Did the Monster Cross the Road? A hardcover picture book by, wait for it, R.L. Stein and oh. Mark Brown. It came out on July 4. It's a picture book. And for example, Why Did the Monster Cross the Road? To bite someone on the other side. Uh, <laughs> turn scary to silly with this laugh out loud joke book. Honey and Funny are monster best friends. When Honey is feeling sad, Funny knows exactly how to cheer up his friend with laughter. That's all I know about this book, other than it has some cute monsters on the cover that look very cheerful. 
It's Why Did the Monster Cross the Road by R.L. Stein, and it already has a one one star rating on Amazon because someone was offended by it. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, come on. Sheesh. Uh, well, my final book of today is called Witch and Wombat. It's a picture book, and it came out July 4th. Mine has three ratings with five stars, so hooray. <laughs> uh, this is by Ashley Ballot. Uh, Wilma, a young witch, cannot wait to get her very first cat. But when the pet store is fresh out of kittens, Wilma brings home a wombat. What a cat astrophe. <laughs> <laughs> a wombat is nothing like a cat but maybe if wilma puts cat ears on the little critter no one will notice spoiler spoiler alert they do <laughs> uh, this is a bright it's really fun it's a picture book that teaches young witches that our differences can be our strengths when we have an open mind uh yeah the illustrations are very very cute and precious it looks like she does end up flying with a cat or maybe she's trying so hard to make her little wombat a cat that <laughs> it's pulling it off. This is called Witch and Wombat. This is by Ashley Ballot. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast about dark children's books coming out in July 2023. We publish podcast episodes on wacky or weird Wednesdays and on fantastic fridays you can also find dark side of the library content on instagram at dark side of the library and on facebook you might want to also stop by our amazon and youtube live stream shopping show dark side of the library is found at amazon.com slash shop slash dark side of the library and we hope to see you online sometime when we're doing a live show thanks so much for listening and we'll talk to you in the next spooky episode